He's just here checking on us.
Good afternoon. I invite you to turn to page 10 in our bulletin and join me in singing God Bless America. Welcome to St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church. Thank you for joining us, and welcome home if you have been away or if you are visiting us today. We are gathered to celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings may be found on page 8 of your bulletin, Our Worship Aid. You will find the common prayers said during Mass on page 9. We are blessed to have you here at St. John the Evangelist. If you would like to receive communion on your tongue, we ask that you please wait at the end of the priest's communion line. Our Eucharistic ministers can only provide communion in the hand. Would you please kindly take a moment now to ensure that your cell phone is powered off? Thank you. And thanks also for honoring the holy integrity of our Mass by remaining through our closing hymn. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Paul. Would you now please turn to the front page of the bulletin and join me in praying our parish prayer for peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, thank you for all creation. In the spirit of Jesus of Nazareth and all teachers of peace who inspire the many faith traditions, help me and all the people of the world learn how to replace hate, war, oppression, and division with love, peace, freedom, and reconciliation. Help me to embody your love in my relationships with my family, friends, strangers, even my enemies. I commit myself to this sacred task throughout my life. So let it be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
please rise and join in singing our opening hymn, America the Beautiful, found on page 11 of your bulletins, page 11. For spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited land, America, America, God is shed. beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul with self-control. Welcome to all of you. And let us begin this 4th of July weekend, this 14th Sunday in ordinary time, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we prepare to celebrate and to enter into these sacred mysteries, let's pause for a moment and call to mind all of our sins. You are set to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on each one of us, forgive us all of our sins, bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. For you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son, Jesus Christ, has raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy. 
For on those you have rescued from slavery of sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face, and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Pleading, pleading for his mercy. 
A reading from this letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, they, they say that a preacher should always preach first to himself. <laughs> Those make the best sermons when the preacher first preaches to himself. And St. Paul certainly does that in the, uh, 
in the second read and read so beautifully. St. Paul is talking about his own weaknesses, his hardships, his insults, his afflictions, his persecutions. And then St. Paul, the old preacher, says something fascinating, something that goes against our American mindset. That power is made perfect in our weakness. Now, we don't like to think that. That power is made perfect in our weakness. But that's the mystery of how God works over and over again. Think of it. If everything went our way all the time, if God answered all our prayers, if everything in our life was perfect, it might be the worst thing for us. If everything in our life was perfect, we might never turn to God. We might never call on God. We might never pray to God. We might walk around thinking we were God. So out of our weakness, out of our affliction, out of our hardship, we become dependent on God. We're forced to call on him time and time again. That's the mystery how, our, how God works. And uh, many of Paul's uh, greatest readings, he's, he's preaching out of his prison cell when he's lost all hope, when he's in darkness, when he's shrouded by gloom. Now, only God can do this. Think of it. Paul's words, written nearly 2,000 years ago right now, they're giving someone hope in a prison cell. They're giving someone hope in a hospital bed. They're giving someone hope in a, on a battlefield. They're reading the words of Paul that my grace is sufficient for you, that the power of Christ may rest in me. Therefore, I am content with weakness and affliction for the sake of Christ, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Powerful, powerful words. But sometimes a story can sum it all. Because what Paul is doing from his prison cell from his darkness, his affliction, he's dispensing hope. And we don't talk about hope, it's a little four-letter word, but there's a power in hope. Paul is dispensing hope. Hope is a powerful thing. And I'll end with this story, it's about these two men in this hospital room. And the doctors don't give them much hope. They're not gonna make it. These two men, one older man who's blind, and then there's a younger man who has terminal cancer. And they've been in the same hospital room for weeks now. And they strike up a, a friendship. So the older man who's blind asks the younger man, uh, what does it look like? Uh, what, what kind of weather is it out there? Describe what you see. And so the younger man who has terminal cancer tells that older blind man, he says, well, it's a beautiful view. I gotta tell you, it's an exquisite day and there's a park outside and there's, there's kids running around this lake. They're playing, they're laughing and uh, there's birds. Uh, it looks like there's a gentle breeze out there. The sun is shining. There's not a cloud in the sky. And so these two men continue their friendship for weeks. But then, sadly, tragically, the younger man with cancer, who's always giving him the weather report, looking out the window to the older man, he dies. But lo and behold, the older man the blind man who wasn't supposed to make it, he, uh, he uh, beats the odds and uh, a couple weeks later, his son and daughter come and he's ready to go home. 
Now, uh, the old blind man says to his son, uh, like he used to do to his roommate, what kind of weather is there outside? What do you see from the window? I heard I have an exquisite view. The oldest son says, Dad, what are you talking about? You got a terrible view. And you just look out, it's a, it's a brick wall. There's no, he says, what? Uh, the man, my, my roommate, God rest his soul, he used to talk about this park outside and away with kids playing. The son becomes indignant. He says, why would he do such a thing? Why would he say that there's a lake when there's only a brick wall there? The daughter interrupts and says, well, maybe the man was trying to give dad hope. And as St. Paul reminds us, hope does not disappoint. St. Paul the Apostle, pray for all of us. Together, we'll stand and profess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he died from heaven. And the Holy Spirit was upon the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to our resurrection. Now, turning to Christ, the source of all our hopes, all our unspoken dreams, let us turn to him now. For the universal church, that we may enter into a deeper relationship with the Lord and follow him with steadfast fidelity, we pray to the Lord. That the church in America may stand first for the gospel of Jesus Christ in the needs of the poor and disenfranchised. We pray to the Lord. For our nation, that God will guide us in living the values which we proclaim so that all may experience life, liberty, and justice. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family of St. John the Evangelist, especially during this 4th of July holiday, that we recall the words inscribed on the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, and move forward with prayerful action for those whose voices are silenced and those whose dignity is violated welcoming the stranger and feeding the hungry. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all who are suffering in the ill of our parish, especially the individuals and families on our prayer list, 
that God will restore them to health and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially Joan Lane, Marion Kelly, Tyler Tenbrock, and Gilbert Reiki, that all may share eternal life in heaven with the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray especially for all of the parishioners of St. John the Evangelist, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord We pray in a special way for Ian and Aiden and their families, for Chuck Mazzone, for the Career family, for Alicia, Allison, and Angela, for, uh, for Bob, Mark, Steve, and Gregory, Bob's brother, for Elaine and Mike Buscemi, for Dr. DeFeo and uh, his wonderful wife, the DeFeo family, Vincent Lasbrigada. We pray for Marion Nickel and the Nickel family, Deborah Marsh, Darlene Folis, the De Genova and the Agostino family. We pray for Mark Mazzucco and uh, for uh, Jack Neri, Kelly Neri, uh, Bernadette Boda. We pray for uh, Diane McCormick, Charlotte Scarbo, Dennis Powers and his wonderful wife, and all those folks we've forgotten to pray for, all our loved ones, all our family members, and especially on this 4th of July week, and all those soldiers who sacrificed their life at the altar of freedom for all of us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our our death. Amen. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn during the preparation of the gifts can be found on page 11 of your bulletin. Beautiful Savior, page 11. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your holy name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the beautiful Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you our holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so now, with all the angels and archangels, with all the martyrs and the saints, with all the powers and hosts of heaven, we declare in one voice the song of your glory. Holy, 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 of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Frank our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, Lord, in a special way, all the faithful departed of all gathered here in this church, 
all our family members and loved ones who were united with your son Jesus in a death like his. Welcome them into the light of your face. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Peter and St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. command informed by divine teaching we now dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all worry and distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace out. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace, guys. Peace. Peace, guys. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please join in singing our communion hymn, Taste and See, found on page 12 of your bulletin, page 12. Oh, 
holds my possessions in my boat you find no power no wealth will you accept then my nets my labor oh lord with your voice set upon me gently smiling you have spoken my name Buscaré otro mar Junto a ti Buscaré otro Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise and thank you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you and all your loved ones, all your family members, living and deceased, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go and acclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you. Have a wonderful Fourth of July weekend. Please join in singing verses one and four of our closing hymn, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, which can be found on page 14 of your bulletin. Page 14. Holy oh, 